Good morning and welcome to Thought for the Day on Wednesday the 12th of July. Today's reading is from 2 Chronicles chapter 34 verses 19 to the end. Forgive me if I stumble or mispronounce some of the names. And when the king heard the words of the law, he tore his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah, Ahikam the son of Shaphan, Abdon the son of Micah, Shaphan the secretary, and Asaiah the king's servant, saying, Go, inquire of the Lord for me and for those who are left in Israel and in Judah, concerning the words of the book that has been found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out on us, because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord, to do according to all that is written in this book. So Hilkiah and those whom the king had sent went to Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tokath, the son of Hazra, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she lived in Jerusalem in the second quarter, and spoke to her to that effect. And she said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Tell the man who sent you to me, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring disaster upon this place and upon its inhabitants. All the curses that are written in the book that was read before the king of Judah. Because they have forsaken me and have made offerings to other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath will be poured out on this place and will not be quenched. But to the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall you say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, regarding the words that you have heard, because your heart was tender, and you humbled yourself before God when you heard his words against this place and its inhabitants, and you have humbled yourself before me, and have torn your clothes and wept before me. I also have heard you, declares the Lord. Behold, I will gather you to your fathers, and you shall be gathered to your grave in peace, and your eyes shall not see all the disaster that I will bring upon this place and its inhabitants. And they brought back word to the king. Then the king sent out and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. And the king went up to the house of the Lord with all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the priests and the Levites, all of the people, both great and small. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant that had been found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of the covenant that were written in this book. Then he made all who were present in Jerusalem and in Benjamin join in it. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God, the God of their fathers. And Josiah took away all the abominations from all the territory that belonged to the people of Israel, and made all who were present in Israel serve the Lord their God. All his days they did not turn away from following the Lord, the God of their fathers. First, a bit of history for context. Israel is long past the golden days of King David and King Solomon. The twelve tribes have been divided into two kingdoms. 
in the north, the kingdom of Israel, ten tribes, and the other two tribes have become the kingdom of Judah in the south. The northern kingdom had been conquered years before by the Assyrians, and the southern kingdom was suffering under poor leadership. King Manasseh had ruled for 55 years, the longest of any king in Judah's history. And the Bible tells us he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. King Manasseh's son, Amon, followed in his father's footsteps. Amon was in fact so evil that his servants conspired to assassinate him only two years into his reign. The immediate heir to the throne was an eight-year-old child called Josiah. The Bible tells us, in the eighth year of his reign, while he was still a boy, Josiah began to seek the God of his ancestor David. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem through a series of vigorous reforms. Josiah cleared away many of the pagan altars and practices that had come to dominate Judah's worship. And eventually he began to repair the house of the Lord, his God. So Josiah sends in teams of workers to the temple. In the process of cleaning and restoring, the book of the law of the Lord is unearthed and taken to Josiah. Today's passage begins with Josiah's reaction to reading from the book of the law. When he realises how far adrift from God's will his nation has become, he tore his clothes. While I'm not recommending that we all start ripping up our wardrobes, this is a visible sign of his extreme distress at the sinfulness highlighted to him by the word of God. And it occurs to me that my reaction when sin is pointed out is rather more muted. All too often an attempt to lessen the severity of it or excuse it in some way, rather than the kind of distress displayed here. Josiah's next action is to seek spiritual advice. He wants to check that his understanding of the book is correct, and he wants to know what can be done to put things right. So he sends his servants to inquire of the Lord. Again, I wonder if this is my reaction to sin. Am I immediately found on my knees, inquiring of the Lord, or seeking out advice from the godly men and women I know? Or am I more inclined to brush it aside, to put off dealing with it until tomorrow, or next week, or the week after? It is interesting that his advisers sought out Huldah, the prophetess, rather than Jeremiah, who you would assume was the big name among prophets at the time. We don't know much about Huldah, but she must have had a reputation as a woman of God that was well known if they chose to go to her to inquire of the Lord. As Christians, do we have the same kind of reputation in our communities? Would people call on us when they are seeking God? Huldah confirms that the wrath of God will indeed be poured out on Judah, because they have forsaken him. But God's wrath is put on hold for the sake of Josiah. She tells Josiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, regarding the words that you have heard. Because your heart was tender, and you humbled yourself before God when you heard his words against this place and its inhabitants, and you have humbled yourself before me, and have torn your clothes and wept before me, I also have heard you, declares the Lord. 
the nation is protected from God's anger for the duration of Josiah's life because of Josiah's actions. God had placed Josiah in a position of power and influence over the nation of Israel. Josiah's final act in this passage is to lead his whole nation back into a covenant relationship with God. Our spheres of influence may be smaller, but I pray that wherever God has placed each one of us, we will use it to lead others into relationship with God. Father, give us hearts like Josiah, tender and humble, repentant, seeking not only to set things right, but to lead others into doing the same. Amen. Thank you for listening. Enjoy the rest of your day.